Pinstar, and this is Potionomics, episode 27. So, yeah, coming off of our um, well, humiliation from Boss Finn, our giant petrification potion gambit has fizzled and flopped. And uh, we are left scrambling trying to make something useful of our uh, assets here. So, just to give you an idea of what we are doing, all of those all of those petrification potions are getting thrown in the aging barrels because, well, we're certainly not going to be able to sell them. So we might as well make them more valuable, you know? I've also uh, got a smattering of others, dowsing enhancers, thunder tonics, insight enhancers, mana potions, speed potions, the works, anything but cures, essentially. So those are cooking. We're going to do another four today because I do like that structure despite um, Boss Finn uh, tripping me up here. So that's about it for the moment. We are going to be traveling. We are going to be seeing, doing three level ups. All right. Good, 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 good. Ooh, that's a new one. I'll take it and I'll take it. Unfortunately, no lumber, which is unfortunate. Now, yeah, the uh, ice crags and forest are still on the rocks and the the ice crags are also um, on the rocks, so we pretty much have to keep everyone going to uh, here. But might as well do the gift. Where should you go today? Back to the Sulphur Falls. Off you go, Mint. All right, Zid. Yeah, we didn't send Zid out last time. Uh, yeah, another Sulphuric Falls would go well for you. Yeah, so you go here. Uh, you do need the poison. Uh, you do need some mana to make it all the way. Grand stamina to hold more. And then a big ol' health pot to tank the extra damage. This should give us what we need. Yep, just enough. Corsac! I think Corsac, um, because the Shadowlands are, um... Yeah, because he was at the Shadowlands last time. Uh, and we might send him back to the Shadowlands. We got a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, nothing we haven't seen before. But he actually got some lumber for once. Although, that's not as critical. You know what? Let's let's do a level up for him. Just in case he gives us something useful. Forget him. Nope, not essences. I'll figure him out soon enough. Sorry to chase you away. I'm about to head down to the beach. Can I join with you? I mean, you can. But I'll be marking turtle nests to keep them from getting trampled. Not what most people call a good time. Are you kidding? Compared to facing another onslaught of demanding customers, it sounds like a dream vacation. Come on, show me what you're up to in your spare time. This is the spot. Thanks for navigating a path down that slope. Your footing's a lot surer than mine. Just take some practice. And decent boots. I almost mis mis misread that line. Having the right gear is always essential. Got to prepare for anything. Apply reinforced for a turn. Huh. Yeah, not, not in our one and done deck, but a pretty potent one. That's doubly true when you're dealing with customers. Ain't that the truth. Now let's get started here. Got everything we need. Corsac pulls a bundle of brightly colored flags from his satchel. He steps nimbly to a loose pile of sand and then plants the flag in the ground. See it? That's a nest. Sea turtles lay their eggs in the sand where they're vulnerable to careless footfalls and errant volleyballs. Not on my watch. You gotta let people know where the nests are. Um, what about the predators? How do we protect the eggs from hungry critters? Not our job. Predators are part of the man natural order. Volleyballs, not so much. Besides, the mothers tend to keep predators in their place. They have powerful flippers and they know how to use them. That's why this particular species is known as the slapping turtle. Noted. I'll keep my distance. Sylvia you know, steps carefully as she follows Corsac along the beach. Plants two more flags before stopping to consider a pair of beachgoers lounging nearby on their towels. Those women appear to have depleted their stamina. Despite all that talk of being prepared, I'm fresh out of restorative potions. I may need to carry them to safety. Don't you dare! They're just enjoying themselves! By laying prone on the ground? Be worried about aerial predators. Maybe that's just me. It's just you. Suppose my time in the wild left me extra vigilant. 
beach is pretty safe. People come here to unwind. Should try it sometime. I don't think you've ever seen you relax. Too much to do. Wouldn't know where to begin. Stop and smell that sea breeze. There's nothing quite like it. You've got a point. Nature is downright enjoyable. When it's not trying to kill you. That's the spirit. Take it from me. When you've got to, you've got to find ways to relax or the stress of the city will eat you alive. A place like this, you can only go so far on the knowledge of your sandworms and squirrels and slapping turtles. Sylvia, I would never slap a turtle. Sorry, just some naturalist humor. Oh boy. I hear what you're saying, and I'll ponder it. But in my heart, I know I'm not the type to be idle. I can appreciate the sea air and the feeling of sand beneath my feet. But I can help out these sea turtles at the same time. Fair enough. But it's definitely a nice break from my shop, just like I hoped. And hey, maybe we'll get lucky and see some of these eggs hatch while we're here. Well, I wouldn't wish for that. Babies are vicious little beasts, and they go right for your weak points. Believe me when I say you do not want to get turtles tapped. And the beach is ruined for me, thanks. <laughs> we can rank him up again, but uh, let's spread the love. Let's send you out. Uh, so yeah, you're going to go to the Shadow Step. You're going to get that. Uh, you're going to get the Drowsiness Potion. Uh, we don't have any Shadow Potions, but we might be able to just face tank it with Health Potions. We, uh, Grand Stamina Potion. Okay, yeah, we have, we have Competition Potion, so we can feed him this one without fear. Uh, let's give him this sight enhancer although hang on what's the what's the pricing on that sight enhancer 366 even with all the good stuff yeah i'm okay feeding him sight enhancer rare ingredients sure and you know what? we could give him another one of the loot capacity ones because we have enough for the competition let's just make sure you can make it all the way through on those hit points Yes, he can. All right, it's uh, Baptiste time. Here the spoils. Okay. Um. Huh. We got a four for, and the rare one was. Um, uh, avalanche, delirium. Yeah, all these things we've we've gotten before. I mean, delirium shrooms okay, but I kind of want to go back to adventuring here, so maybe not. Let's get you a gift and maybe level you up. I think it's I think we're due for a level up for you. Can you sense it in the air? Grand things are afoot. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that tomorrow is the beginning of a bold new era for the Heroes Guild. Okay, I'll bite. What's up? Mmm, ice cream first, I think. Then business. The ice cream vendor has new flavors since Sylvia was last there. While she struggles to decide between Bedazzler Honeycomb or Brambleberry, Baptiste simply asks for a scoop of the day's special. I always order the newest flavor. In fact, I've become something of a guinea pig for the ice cream maker. I'm certain I was the only one in town who ordered the Stingray Surprise. That's brave of you. More brave than you realize. My mother might disown me if she knew. She's the heiress to the world's largest vanilla dynasty. In my family, chocolate is forbidden. Strawberry is sacrilege. I'll admit not every flavor is a winner, but I've had enough of vanilla for a lifetime. But enough about ice cream. I lured you here with the promise of news. I believe I've finally found a solution to my dilemma, a way to alleviate some of the financial stress burdening my heroes. Or have you figured it out already? Are you cutting costs? Across the guild hall, a tighter overhead budget would free up money for other uses. You know, I like that idea quite a lot. In fact, I like it so much that it's the very first thing I tried upon my arrival. Any unnecessary fat has long since been trimmed. Otherwise, you wouldn't catch me dusting quite so often. Okay, I'll bite. What's your idea? I'll tell you, it's education, Sylvia. Starting tomorrow, I shall be giving a series of lectures aimed at demystifying venture capitalism, therefore empowering my people to grow their capital through the judicious application of first-class investment strategies. 
Oh boy. I know it's a mouthful, but don't worry. I'll be preparing this, peppering the seminar with ribald jokes just to keep them interested. It's a sweet idea. Uh-oh. Your words are flattering, but your tone is not. The thing about investing money is that you have to have money to invest. It's a great way to make the rich richer, but for those of us struggling just to get by? Oh, oh, I see. All the investment tips in the world won't help you if you don't have two coins to rub together. What a shame, and I was so looking forward to leading a seminar. Although this might explain why the sign-up sheep remains empty. I'd be up for hearing your ribald jokes. I haven't written any yet. Locker room talk isn't my strength. But I did take the time to draft a new coupon for you. I trust that effort, at least, was not wasted. Nice. Well, this definitely alleviates my financial burdens. Nice to know I still have some good ideas. If it's within my power to fix the guild's problem, Sylvia, I'm sure of that, but I'm baffled on the how of it. I clearly have some more thinking to do, but I have figured that well, one thing, you. You are a wonderful sounding board, and I don't take that for granted. Not for a moment, and not one bit. Hmm, we can rank him up again. Now, do we want to invest? I mean, we have plenty of delirium shrooms. Yeah, no, I want I want the locations clean for, for next day. You know what? I almost wonder if I should just do a six for... Since we're not going to get that much money opening the shop, why don't we just do all rank ups? That, that feels a little bit better for me. So let's get you guys some fishy fishies and we'll rank up the pirates. See if they got anything good for us. And of course we'll buy their loot box. Let's see. Thunder Quartz, Gin Blossoms, Mushroom Mire. Ember of Mana. Not bad. Not bad. Alright, let's see what the kitties have for us. I just brought you a fish, actually. There's a bomb! What? Where? Hi, Sylvia. There's no bomb. Yeah, don't spill your sand or anything. I just wanted to make a point. You gotta start out loud and bombastic if you want to grab someone's attention. Avasti! Avasti. Next card you play costs zero patience, but also shocks. Eh, self-nerfing, actually. Can only be played as an opener. Yeah, not feeling it. Not feeling it. Close, though. It's got potential, but good tactic. Or maybe that's massive adrenaline, sh or maybe that's the massive adrenaline rush of talking. Hey, put that energy to use. You want to help us out again? What's on the agenda? Or vendettas? This is bigger than that. Way bigger. We got to plan out tomorrow's naps. Naps? Seriously? It sounds like a small thing, but naps are important, Sylvia. Yeah, there's an old rhyme to help you remember. Rested pirates, nice and quiet. The cranky pirates, they start riots. Pepper writes out a series of equations on a roll of parchment. The tricky part is that all that pirates only nap in a patch of direct sunlight. Yeah, we gotta account for the precise pos position of the sun, which changes by minor degrees each day, as do the exact number of minutes between dawn and dusk. The Pepper's direction, Sylvia uses a yardstick to measure out the shadows that will be cast by the ships and cargo at various points throughout the day. The math is surprisingly complicated, but Salt and Pepper eventually have a nap schedule that will accommodate the entire crew. But Wait a minute. What if it's cloudy tomorrow? Then get ready for some riots! Maybe I should board up my windows just in case. But you can handle a bit of chaos in the streets. You've been a real daredevil. Guess you'd have to be sitting up shopping an island that's overrun with monsters. Town's safe enough. The heroes do a good job keeping the scary stuff at bay. And I ain't got no complaints about that, kitten. Believe me. Monsters aren't so scary. Whatever you say, Captain. Monsters are just like any other living being. They need to eat. They need to sleep. They know fear. And that makes them vulnerable. See, Pepper believes in getting in being prepared. He's got a strategy to singer podly take down any monster you could name. Even 
Even Krakens? Last time one of them surfaced, it took a whole team of heroes to put it down. As a pirate, I've given the matter of Krakens a lot of thought. The question is, where are you fighting it? On land, it quickly dries out. This makes it slower and its skin grows papery and weak. I could recommend pinning its limb to the ground. This will either leave it landlocked and vulnerable or force it to sever its own tentacles to return to sea. Yeesh! On the water, it's more a difficult fight, but the Kraken swallows its prey whole. My plan would be to get swallowed while far fully armed and hack my way free through its unprotected innards. That might not work for you. Humans don't have great night vision. Or strong enough stomachs, I think. In the end, it's about planning ahead and controlling the field of battle. I'm convinced. How about you? I almost feel bad for the monster. It sounds like they don't stand a chance. They should, they should have thought of that before attacking us in these purely hypothetical scenarios. But enough daydreaming. We got piratical stuff to get back to. Which may or may not involve shoving some belligerent beasties who are really in charge out there. Hmm, we could do more leveling up with them. But let's spread things out. Meow for now. Yeah, since I'm not opening shop, I'm not going to buy a buff from Roxanne. We will do a storyline thing for her. See, your lips are look uh, extra glossy today. I just touched up my makeup a minute ago. It pays to put in the effort to look your best. If only because it provides it can provide a surge of self-confidence. Chapstick. All right, that's that's a good buff, but uh, it's a multi-turn affair, and it's not card draw, so it doesn't really fit. I can make an effort, but don't tell me you need more confidence. Generally, no, although I've been doing some soul-searching of late. Terribly inconvenient stuff, soul-searching. It started when I ran into someone in the street. An old friend? An old Mark. A man I fleeced quite a bit of gold over the last few months. He spotted me through the crowd. He approached. I was sure he intended to cause a scene, perhaps demand his money back. Instead, he tried to give me money. He told me he missed my potions. He offered me a goodly sum for a fresh dose of my anti-boldness elixir. Okay, that's definitely not a potion that exists. I know that, and you know that. He never figured it out. My first thought was, easy money, right? But something happened as I stood there staring at the man's trusting eyes and swiftly receding hairline. I imagine our roles were reversed. I felt empathy. So you told him the truth? Oh, heavens no. I told him I was late for charity work at a home for plucky suit-covered orphans, and I beat a hasty retreat. But I didn't take his money. I think that's perhaps due to your influence. And I suppose I just wanted to tell you. That is, I thought you should know. Yes? If not for this ridiculous moral code, I'd have extra money with which to pay your rent. Dang, is it too late to go back and fleece the guy? That opportunity, like the man's bangs, is lost forever. Now let's get out of here for a spell. I'm in the mood for a change of scenery. Such a strange place, the forest. It's so open. And no one to hear us scream. Keep your eyes peeled for monsters. I'll protect you, I assure you. There's nothing in the vicinity fiercer than I. Except you, perhaps. You've already gotten the better of me once. You mean in the competition? That, wasn't exact, that doesn't exactly make me fierce. Doesn't it? When I first saw you, I sized you up immediately. I pegged you for a spoiled little girl who'd never had to fight or scrape for anything in her life. And I was certain you'd be easy prey. I'm not too proud to admit I was wrong. Wrong on all accounts. You're a fighter, Sylvia. You're every bit of a fighter I am. Well, thank you for acknowledging that. And you're right. I'm as tough as nails and twice as sharp. There, see? You don't even need the compliment. I can get it out of the way if you want to pat yourself on the back. My point is this. We have common ground, and a lot of it. I thought that made us enemies. And then I thought it made us allies. But we're more, even, than just allies, aren't we? We're friends. True friends. 
that's no small thing, not to me. Sylvia, your kindness and support, your belief in me, you're the best friend I've ever had, ever. Roxanne, that's, that's so nice. I can't help bracing myself waiting for a zinger about my hair. I give you a hard time, I know. I'll try to go easier on you. But teasing is how I express affection. And I have a great deal of affection for you, Sylvia. I mean, I must care for you a great deal if I'm able to overlook so very many shortcomings. There it is. I jest because I care. And because it's easier than saying thank you. But thank you, Sylvia. Without you, I don't know where I'd be. Maybe in the end, I would have been fine on my own. But maybe not. My life is certainly better for having you in it. Not ah, evening music. Yup, yup. You know what? We gotta we gotta say hi to our buddy Mucktuck. Also, we do need to. I, I do want to check out Luna. See if we have some good advertisements for tomorrow. Yeah, and I wish. Visual or sound trait? Well, that's potential. Let's go visual trait. Do you like minerals? Pretty neat, okay. But we're not leveling you up because your cards scare me. Now we gotta go say hi to our buddy, Muktuk. Give you a fish first. I don't think we have anything. I, I'm gonna wait until the next week before I go crazy with him as far as like buying and upgrading new stuff. But I, uh, I'm happy to do a rank up. It's been a while since we've uh, hung out with Muck Tuck, our, our new uh, our, our boyfriend. Your arrival is like the dawn itself. Be gone, darkness, for Sylvia has arrived. I am a lucky walrus, indeed. Oh, why did I do the two deep voice characters in a row in the same episode? Ah. Like a, I like a warm work. Yeah, I like a warm welcome. Never a fan of the dawn, though. Given the choice, I'd rather sleep in. That is a choice I cannot condone. Our time is too precious to be spent on repose. I work better when I'm rested, and I'm way less cranky. Hmm, well, if it is in service of the great work, then naps are allowed. As are romantic excursions. Oh, yeah? Is that in the handbook somewhere? It is, I am certain. For art comes from a lived experience, and so live we must, experience we shall. Sylvia, are you ready for an outing with great romantic potential? You know me, I'm up for anything. We are close now, it is just up ahead. Muktuk leads Sylvia confidently through the trees. This is clearly a path he's walked before. The underbrush recedes and the trees grow less dense, and Sylvia realizes they've come to a clearing. At its center is a large frozen lake. The area has been decorated with candles and wind chimes. A picnic basket is tucked beneath the tree. All this for me? In truth, I worry the gesture is not large enough, and I cannot take credit for the frozen lake. It is an uncanny and awe-inspiring feature of the landscape. This forest contains many such oddities. A hero shared the location with me in exchange for sharper weapons and a masterful shield. For now, it remains largely secret, but word will get out. Some enterprising Rafton will no doubt find a way to monetize it. Let us enjoy it before this happens, yes? Muktuk pulls out two pairs of shoes from his satchel. They've been modified with blades affixed to their soles. First, Sylvie expects the shoes to be or some kind of weapon, but Muktuk dons a pair and then glides out onto the ice. This recreational activity is much loved where I'm from. Come, let me show you how it's done. Muktuk moves with remarkable grace upon the ice. He twirls, he leaps, he's as nimble as a deer. Sylvia dons the bladed boots he made for her, then goes to join him. She steps tentatively on the ice and falls immediately onto her bottom. It's embarrassing, but Muktuk doesn't laugh. He offers her a flipper, pulls her to her feet, and takes her for a circuit around the lake. It almost feels like I'm flying without a broom. That was incredible. I'm glad that you enjoy it. But no date would be complete without a gift. Aha! So when we do our big cauldron overhaul, it'll be much cheaper. You're spoiling me, and I like it. 
If you will pardon the expression, today is only the tip of the iceberg. I wonder if that's an innuendo. My team four, guided by the wisdom and the will of our ancestors, have created such splendor all across the world. The Kolralris of Rhodes, the Pinny, Pinna Pyramids, the Tuscanj, all are sights that I wish to see one day, that I must see, and I very much wish to share those experiences with you. First Rafta, then the world. Exactly that! And yet, there is no rush, is there? With you by my side, I wish to cherish each moment. Come, take my flipper in your hand, and let us take another spin around the ice. <coughs> Thank you, Muck Tuck. Very, very heartwarming. All right, I don't think we can do any more rank ups, even if we have the thing unlocked, because our last thing is us going back home. But we do need to expand the shop. We've got one new thing. Let's double, oh yeah, let's give a gift. We got like a billion of these silver dollops. All right, um, I wonder if there's, what there would be an interesting filter um, is a uh, filter by how many you already have. But that's fine. Yeah, we got some, we got some anti-sales here. I'll buy some Sorcerite. Buy some of these mites. Um, yeah, they're only worth it. They're only two of them. Only two of them, even though we've been, we've been manufacturing our own. Chimera waste. I think we're going to be getting some of that from our slimes when we, uh, tomorrow, but, um, yeah, we'll get that. Hangman eels are good. Yeah, any 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 um, even Steven ones are worth getting lots of because then you can just pop out potions quick and dirty. Yeah, that's on an anti sale, so I ain't gonna buy. Hmm, Geode citruses is, is, are good. Let's get some of these flowers. And I think that's about it. So I don't want to go, well, yeah, let's get some of my favorite gem. Some of these. Yeah, because going do too far down will make it difficult. Although, yeah, if we're, if we're completely out of something, I want to stock up just so that we have the option for it. In case we need to fit that in. Oop. Harpy's Heart of Stone, but it's an anti-sale. Oh, we'll buy one. Just, just to have it. Raiju droppings? Sure. Uh, let's pick up these dwarf krakens. It's hard to argue with a 40 of one. Slapping turtle shells. Yeah, this is a little weak now. All right, I think we're good. So let us return home. I'm just here. Hey, Oswald's back. Sort of. It's not so bad without customers around. Hello again, Rob. Uh, hello again, Robin. Hello again, Sylvia. Robin and May, I didn't think I'd be seeing you before the competition. Did you reconsider and decide to buy a potion after all? Ha! Keep up the good work, and I won't be able to resist. But no, I'm here to discuss another potion maker entirely. What do you know about this boss Finn character? Meerp. He's a piece of work, I can tell you that. He's using some kind of magical patent to prevent me from selling certain potions. Yeah, like cures! I could have made so much money with those those petrification cures today, but no! Not just you, it's affecting all of us. And between you and me, I am not happy. It can't be legal. It's not. But who's put, going to step in? Rafta is barely civilized. We have a town guard to protect us from the obvious violent crimes. But the subtler variety of criminal could ride roughshod over us for years. He's my next opponent, you know. We're scheduled to face off in a couple of days. Oh, I'm aware. And I absolutely must maintain my objectivity. Otherwise, he and I would be having words right now. And I guarantee you, he wouldn't enjoy that very much. 
happen to beat him, feel free to kick him while he's down, would you? I'll turn a blind eye. If you don't beat him, however, well, my objectivity only has to last so long. And I've got a potion of dehydration with his name on it. See you soon, Sylvia. Wow, I guess Boss Finn brings out the murderous rage in just about everybody, right, Oswald? Oh, right. For a second, I... Never mind. Aw, oh, she misses him. Ah, uh, 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 mm. of frazzin. All right, folks. Um, if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, Spin Pinstar signing out. See ya! <laughs>